Hello and welcome to the podcast. I am so excited today because we have a very, very special guest. Her name is Sherry Schneider and she is the co-author of The Rules. Now, we over 40 ladies, we know about the rules, right? If you haven't heard about the rules, what in the world? So if you've been following this podcast for a while, you know that I was ridiculously dating challenged and I spent many years out in the field just getting all the heartbreaks, getting dumped, getting just crazy things and awful things and crying and just terrible dating experiences happening to me. And I read the rules and it was so helpful. I wish I had implemented them a little better and a little sooner, but I've got to say, so there's so much wisdom in this book and in the follow-up books that Sherry and Alan have written. And I wanted to bring Sherry on today to talk about the rules and, and how they work and some of why they work and how they can help you find a great guy. So thanks so much for coming on, Sherry. Thank you, Renee. Great to be here. Awesome. So I have some questions and uh, so we'll just dive right in. So, uh, you know, the rules was written back in the 90s. And a lot of times I hear things like, you know what, can the rules help single women over 40 in today's dating climate. So much has changed since the late 90s when this book is written. And and ladies are wondering, like, does this stuff still work? That's a great question. We get that a lot. <clears throat> Actually, the rules are timeless. It's based on biology. The premise is that men love a challenge. Men and women are different. We're equal, but we're different. So men love a challenge. They love bungee jumping and the stock market and fast cars, whereas women like relationships and security. And so men love a challenge. So that's why back 50 years ago with feminism, as great as that was for work, we should get equal pay for equal work. Women started to use feminist principles of being aggressive at work to dating. They started asking men out and sleeping with them right away and moving in. And it didn't work because men love a challenge. So they're not interested in women who are aggressive. So to answer your question, the rule still applies because it's biological, not technological. So even though we have dating apps now and Instagram and Facebook and the way women are being asked out is different, they're being DM'd or texted, it hasn't changed the fact that the man needs to make the first move and the woman needs to be... Um, either unavail, you know, less available or hard to get or busy. You know, I was just talking to a 40 plus year old client today. And she said, the guy wants to see her every day. They're dating three months. I said, don't see him every day. See him three times a week because he won't marry you if he can see you all the time. What incentive is there for him to marry you if he can see you seven days a week? So it's about being hard to get, being busy. Yeah. yeah. That has changed. Yeah, I uh, I noticed myself when I was on the dating sites and apps that um, it always worked better when the guy reached out to me than if I reached out to him. Even if I just hit like on match.com or whatever, it, it just, guys can say, you know, and then I met my husband and it's so funny because he said he messaged 50 to 100 women for everyone who responded to him. And I said, yeah, that's, that's tough. I said, did, did women reach out to you ever? And he said, well, once in a while, but he never, he never was interested in any of them. Right. Cause men oh. want what they can't have. They want a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So now what would you, if you had a friend or, I mean, I know you have clients coming to you too, but let's say you had a really dear friend who really wanted to meet a quality man. What would you tell her to do? Well, first, I would want to see photos. I want to see what she's, what she looks like. You know, I mean, if she's a friend, then I know what she looks like. But, you know, women gain weight sometimes. But the point is, the visual cannot be underestimated. Men are visual and they have a light, uh, a type and a look. So if you're using dating apps, which I would suggest a friend do, no matter how much you've heard, oh, it's crazy, you don't meet anyone, it's, they just text, they don't ask out. You just said you met your husband on Tinder. Many of my clients met their husband on Tinder or Match or Hinge. 
I would tell them, I need to see photos. You need to grow your hair long if it's short. You need to wear hoop earrings like you are, Renee. You need to wear a sexy outfit, not slutty, but sexy because women tend to wear. When we do consultations, we do private consultations by phone and email and women will send us photos. They're wearing turtlenecks, you know, short hair, glasses, no earrings, um, sneakers. You know, they're not dressed to date. So we help them, you know, re, re, refresh their wardrobe, get their hair done, makeup, you know, bronzer, look like you just went to Saint-Tropez, nude lipstick, just have this sort of like vavoom kind of look that men like, that most men like. So take quality photos. You could do selfies too with long straight hair, big hoop earrings, a V-neck or scoop neck top, heels, and then post the photos and your profile online. A big mistake women make, and we say this to friends and clients, <clears throat> don't say you're looking for your soulmate. Don't say that you've been heard and looking for somebody sincere. Um, don't say that you've been scammed. Don't say you're gonna you're the kind of girl that would pick them up from the airport and cook them lasagna or, you know, like <laughs> don't be a caretaker. Yeah, you'd be surprised. These women post profiles where they're a caretaker, they're a nurse, they're yeah. and and they get guys that take advantage of them because sure. they put in a position to be used. Also, don't rely completely on dating apps. I'm married 30 years, so I never had to deal with dating apps, but there were personal ads back in the 80s and 90s. And um, I didn't rely just on that. I did um, singles events, speed dating, club med, club getaway, you know, go to singles events, go to sports bars. You know, when Super Bowl Sunday was happening. I was like telling all my clients, go to a sports bar. You don't have to like football. You don't have to understand football. Just walk around the bar, get some water and leave after an hour. You've got to be out there, but join a gym. Jerry Seinfeld met his wife, Jessica at the gym. Um, you know, Sebastian Melscalco met his wife through a trainer. He said, do you know of any hot girls? She was on the treadmill. Boom. That the guy just has to see you. If you're his look and his type, you're done. And as, assuming you're not, you know, clingy or needy, don't stay home. A lot of clients, you know, they come home from work, they're exhausted. They watch Netflix, they get into pajamas, they get popcorn. It's like, you cannot meet anybody in your house. No matter how tired you are, just go on your way home, hit a, you know, hit a bar or a nice upscale restaurant, hang out for an hour with a girlfriend and then go home. Because in that hour, you can meet your husband. It's just... It's just that easy, you know, that simple. Yeah, yeah. We wow. actually just came out with our latest book, The Rules Handbook. It's a compilation of everything that we've learned in the last 30 years about dating, marriage, and also rules for everyone. And we just can't emphasize enough the importance of showing up to parties and singles events and online because pretty girls who don't show up have less of a chance of meeting a guy than less attractive women that do show up. So you have to be in it to win it. I I completely agree. I, back in the day when I was a single mom, my, my social life consisted of going to Borders Bookstore on Saturday night and gorging on self-help books and working. Mm -hmm. That was it. And so I never met anybody like for 10 years. You know, that's funny because I had a client in England who was like, I want to stay home on Saturday night and read your books. And I said, no, no, I don't want you to read my book on Saturday night. Go on dates. In between dates, you can read the book. But some women, they become obsessive about the rules or other self-help books. And all they want to do is read, but you have to do it. You can't just read it. You, you can't just know it. You have to apply it. It's, so it's easy to stay home and just you know, highlight the rules. I, I don't want you to do that. I want you to get dressed, put on makeup and go out the door and meet guys. You know, many nights you may come home and just have to take your makeup off and say, I didn't meet anyone, but at least you're trying. You have to try. When I was single, Ellen and I had this policy, three singles events a week. Love it. I went to three a week. Unless there was a snowstorm, I was at an event. That is such great advice. I love that. Yeah, a lot of people that I talk to complain that they don't want to use the apps and the sites. They want to meet someone naturally. But when you ask them what they're doing to facilitate that, it's like, well, I go to the grocery store. Um, I, you know, I go to work, 
I, I wish one of my friends had fixed me up. No, go out. I love that three events a week and do the sites and apps too. Exactly. You know, it's nice. It's a nice thought that you're going to meet men organically or naturally at Trader Joe's. But the fact of the matter is, unless you're in your 20s or in college, you're not going to be running into men easily. And also like join a gym where there are men. I talk to clients like I take yoga, I go to Pilates. Men are not typically at yoga and Pilates. You have to go to an all-purpose gym where there are men pumping iron. Yes. You just have to be, you have to be at, you know, golf, golf places and tennis courts, wherever the men are, Super Bowl parties, whatever it is, football, where the men are is where you have to be, but just don't talk to anyone first, but you have to just show up. Love it. Love it. So what do you do? I get this question a lot too, and I'm curious what your take is on it. What do you do if you're not attracted to the men who are reaching out to you or pursuing you? Like uh, you go on the sites, you go on the apps, you go out to the events and yes, guys do ask you out and they're interested in you, but you just never get the guys that you are attracted to. I mean, this is a universal problem. Every time we talk to clients, they're like, I can do the rules on guys I don't like, but I can't do the rules on guys that I do like. So what we say is, you know, I mean, there's a like a hard no where you just see their photo or you meet them and you're like, absolutely not 100%. So then obviously you don't have to date a man that you're not interested in, but you'd be surprised. Some of our clients that have gone on first dates from a dating app or a blind date where they thought, no, not my type. We said, just stay for the hour, just go on one hour date, go on a one hour date. And they fell in love with the guy's personality. We have a client who actually worked at a matchmaking service. A guy comes in and he's like, I want to go out with you. And she said, that's against our policy. I cannot go out with you. And plus she wasn't attracted to him. And he persisted and he was so funny and so smart. They're married now like 20 something years with two kids. Aww. So yeah, just give a guy, we're not telling you to go on 10 dates with him, but just give him a, a date or two, a chance or two, because sometimes guys can win you over, um, that you're not interested in, you know, initially interested in. And that's actually the rules by accident, you know, where you're not mm -hmm. interested and they sense that and they really try to win you over. So it can work out. Yeah. I mean, it, it never works with the guy who isn't interested in you. Like, mm -hmm. is that, I mean, I think you've, you've said that before, like the guy has to pick you out. You're not going to grow on him. He might grow on you. Right. We've never seen it where the girl's personality was such that his lack of attraction was won over. I mean, guys will say, you know, she's such a nice girl. She's so smart, but I don't, I'm just not attracted to her. A guy cannot be with a woman he's not attracted to. Now he may not be, she may not be your idea of attraction. Maybe she looks like his sister. I mean, for example, Warren Beatty and Annette Benning. she happens to look like his half sister, Shirley MacLaine. I mean, she's very pretty. And she was not looking to meet someone. She was there for the movie role. And he said in a, a minute, this is my future wife. So maybe she's not like Raquel Welch looking, but if he likes that look, which apparently he does, or his, she looks like his sister, that can clinch the deal. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so... Because I get that all the time, guys, and, and this was my favorite flavor of dysfunction when I was single, is I would just get stuck on one guy, I would I would decide that he was the guy for me, and I just would not give up like a dog with a bone, and I, did, I just did ridiculously embarrassing things, and it, of course, it never worked out, and I would have other guys pursuing me, but I wouldn't give them the time of day. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's why we wrote the rules. Ellen and I wrote it because we saw this happen in college and after college where a girl would be fixated on a guy. I think if she brought him, you know, baked lasagna, if she stood next to him at the office, if she, you know, helped him with math at college, you know, whatever it is, she just thought she can make it happen. It doesn't work like that. He has to instinctively like your look, like your type and... <clears throat> he has to pursue. You can't make it happen with a guy. Yeah. 
So met my husband, my friend and I went to a singles event and she liked him. I, you know, he, he made a move towards me. And then I started flitting around the room. Like we tell you to do, like, don't stand there all night with him. And she stood next to him all night thinking that he would, you know, ask her out. And he didn't because she wasn't his look. I mean, she's yeah. very sweet, but she was not his look. So standing next to a man all night will not make him ask you out. <laughs> right. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> if, that, if that could happen, you know, we'd all be standing next to George Clooney or, you know, or sure. whoever. Of course. Of course. Yeah. I see. I see that a lot too. A lot of times too, um, a woman will want a guy that maybe, maybe she's been out on a date or two with him and he moves on and she gets, gets fixated on, on that or thinks that's the guy she should be dating. There's, or you think that you should be with the guy, the one who got away. And it's, there's a term for it. It's called alpha widows. I did a podcast on it where it's kind of the same thing. Only you actually did go out with this guy, but then he dropped you and, and you, you compare everyone to him. Right. Yeah. Once he breaks it off, I mean, it becomes a buyer beware situation because if he ended it, he could end it again. Even if he marries you, he could one day say, you know, this isn't working out for me. So if a guy breaks up with you, that's um, a red flag. You know, it's not, it's definitely not a good sign when they really love you. They never, they want to grow old with you in the nursing home. They talk about grandchildren, you know, they're just stuck like glue. You can't get rid of them. That's yeah. That's like my husband. He was like, he, he was, he was like Velcro. Yeah. There he was. I mean, in a good way, not, it wasn't creepy, right. but, right. but yeah, he was, there was, there was no doubt in my mind ever, never once wondered where I stood with him. There was no, what are we conversation? None of that. That's great. Yeah. That's what we tell clients you can have, like it's work, you know, to delay gratification, to not see him so often, to not sleep with him right away, to not text him. Oh, here's an interesting link to a restaurant. I mean, we all want to initiate when we like a guy, but if you don't do those things, if you sit on your hands, keep busy with work or the gym, whatever, you will get a guy that chases you. You know, if he was initially interested and you don't pursue him, he will chase you. And that he'll feel like he won the prize, you know? Yeah. And that, and that will last forever. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you, what would you say to women who are afraid that they have to settle now that they're a little older, they, they, they miss the boat and they, their twenties and thirties are over. And now they're like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm in my forties. I'm in my fifties. I'm in my sixties. Do I have to settle? Well, we don't think you have to settle in terms of feeling that giddy, jumping up and down feeling of, oh my God, this is a guy I could spend the rest of my life with. That spark, you should not settle on. Where you may have to settle is he's divorced, he has kids, he's older or widowed or, you know, or he's not, you know, rich or whatever. Like there may be circumstantial things that you need to settle on, but you should never settle on being excited to be with him. Mm, yeah. Now, some clients that we have in their 40s or early 40s, late 30s, they want to have children and they're not married. So they don't want to settle on having children. And I agree with them, you know, that is not negotiable. However, they have to refrain from bringing it up on the first date. They can't go on a date and say, listen, I'm 42, my eggs are frozen. <laughs> I want, to, I want to have children because they get very impatient because the clock is ticking and they just want to know right away if he wants to have kids with the right guy, he'll bring it up anyway. So if you do the rules and are light and breezy within a few dates, a guy will say, you know, how do you feel about children? Or do you want to get married? Well, you know, like he'll bring that stuff up, but you can't bring it up without looking intense and desperate. Yeah. Yeah. So are there really guys out there who want to commit to it? Sometimes it just seems like trying to find a needle in a haystack when you go out and about, when you go on the dating sites and the apps and you see all these people who just want to date around, or they say they're not looking for anything serious. So they want 
friends with benefits. It's not like back in the day when there was just everybody wanted to settle down within a few years when when you were back in college or whatever. It now anything goes. There there are people who just got divorced who just want to party it up and date everybody they can date and all the things. So are there really guys out there who are actually looking to commit to someone? We do believe they they're out there. They're <clears throat> you know rare, but the thing is too many men today have been spoiled by non-rules girls. <clears throat> they're on Bumble. Girls are messaging them first. Girls are asking them out. They're baking them dinners. You know, they're sleeping with them right away. They're seeing them a lot. They're traveling with them, you know, without knowing them for more than a few weeks. So men are being spoiled by non-rules girls and therefore they seem non-committal. But if they meet a rules girl, suddenly their desire to commit just happens so, or, or it comes to the surface. And we've seen this with, you know, I mean, we look at celebrities and TV shows and we see guys that were just spoiled by non-rules girls, you know, women that dated them for years and put up with no commitment, no marriage, no ring, suddenly meet a rules girl and are like, you know, yes, I I want it, but I want it with her. Yeah. They don't want it with just anyone. I mean, Michael Douglas is a good example you know, he, he was married and it wasn't the rules. And then he met Catherine Zeta-Jones, Catherine Zeta-Jones. And he saw her, you know, it was the perfect rules situation. He saw her on Mask of Zorro. He called his agent. Who is she? She's in France for the Cannes Festival. He flew down to France, says, I want to father your children. She walked away, didn't give him the time of day. <laughs> and she said in Vanity Fair magazine that her mother taught her not to give it away, you know, by hard to get. So she did that. I, I, she, he, I think they were dating like six months and he said, do you even like me? Like, that's how you have to be with a guy like Michael Douglas. Like if you're looking for somebody that's really been spoiled by women and is a catch, you cannot be so available and so readable. Like you have to be mysterious and intriguing because they have been around the block. So they want somebody who's special. Mm hmm so you have to be that girl. You have to be different. The rules is like a perfect formula because it teaches you how to stand out from the crowd. Every other girl is messaging and texting. And I mean, we have clients. I want to send them a link to this interesting article. I want to send them a link to this travel resort. And like, no, don't send links. Don't send anything. Don't text him. Don't initiate anything. You know, we said don't call and rarely return his calls. Like, one of our clients got flowers unexpectedly. She said, can I text him to thank to thank him? And I said, no, wait until he texts you and then say thank you. So you're responding, not initiating. And sure enough, 20 minutes later, he sent her a text about something. And I said, okay, now you could say thanks for the flowers. So <laughs> that creates intrigue. It creates desire. It creates longing. Women that make it so easy are spoiling it for men. and But there are men that want to commit. They just cannot find a girl that has self, self-respect. self Like for example, in the, in the Rules Handbook, our latest book, we talk about higher self and lower self. Your lower self wants to call him, wants to sleep with him right away, wants to talk about children, marry, you know, like wants to just lay it all out there on the table and have absolutely no mystery. But your higher self knows that if you practice self-control and are slow with intimacy and, and not initiating and waiting it out, you will get the guy forever as opposed to, you know, like a one night stand. So lower self gets the one night stand, higher self gets a husband. Right. So worth it, even though it's more work. Too many people in our culture just want immediate gratification. They just want, you know, they, so they meet a guy at a bar and they, go out and they literally have seven hour dates. I mean, it's horrifying. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how many, you know, the first question when we do consultations, how many hours was the, how, how long was the first date? Uh, seven hours, seven hours. And not only are they going on such long dates, they're actually initiating it to be longer. They're saying, oh, there's an interesting bakery around the corner or, oh, there's, there's a comedy club. You know, they're after the one hour coffee date or drink date, they're bringing up other things to do that same night. So it's all this, desire for immediate gratification and yeah. it doesn't work if he wants to see you again he has to wait a week and ask you out for dinner so the first 
date is a one hour coffee or drink date. The second date is a week later, Saturday night, hopefully for dinner, three hours. And, you know, you have to build up gradually. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of dates, what about paying for dates? A lot of women are taught that even I even um, back in the day had a dating coach tell me that I should offer to pay for dates, which I never did. I followed the rules. <laughs> Good. Yeah, that's bad advice. There's so much bad advice out there. There's absolutely no reason to pay, not because you can't afford it. It's because any guy that would ask you to pay or accept payment doesn't like you. Yeah. Because when a guy's on a date and they really like you, they're thinking, how can I win her over? How can I get her to go out with me again? If he's thinking you had the chicken, I had the veal, you know, if he's thinking like that, then he doesn't like you in a romantic way. So it's not about the money. It's about his lack of interest. Yeah. That's what women are not understanding. They're making it a financial issue. Oh, well, I can afford to pay. I should pay. I'm a feminist. No. If he's asking you out and he's courting you, he should pay. And if he asks you to pay, of course you'll pay, but that means he doesn't like you. So it's way deeper than splitting the check. It means there's really no courtship here. It's not going to be a romantic relationship. It's going to be like coworkers. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, um, I mean, in my experience, the, the men who were interested in me couldn't do enough for me. They yeah. wanted to open the door for me. They wanted to pick me up and walk me home and make sure I got home safely and pick up the check. They, they wanted, they would say, do you want dessert? Do you want this? Do you yeah. want that? There wasn't any, oh, are you going to order another drink? What's, how much is it? Like, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, we had one client meet a guy on an app and they went to a restaurant. He didn't even ask her what she wanted to drink. She ended up getting water and then she ended up in his apartment. He didn't, he not, he did not spend one cent and he got, he got sex. Wow. Ones. Yeah. So again, women listening to this, it's about your higher self. You know, if a guy can't buy you a drink, how is he going to propose or be your husband? Like, this is not about money. We're not looking, we're not gold diggers. We're not looking for four-star restaurants. We're just looking for courtship. And the other issue, and the reason we wrote, we have courses that clients take, and one of them is charm school. We have found, I don't know if it's the breakdown of the family system or just our culture, you know, everything is out there and transparent and confrontational, but women have lost the art of being charming. You know, they go on dates and they say, you know, I can't believe you're giving me this cheap wine. And, uh, you know, I, my ex-boyfriend took me out to a better place. Like they're not classy mm -hmm. and guys don't want to be with a girl that's not classy. Maybe they'll sleep with a girl that's not classy, but they don't want to marry a girl that is not charming, that is not, you know, lovely to be with. Like you, if you're complaining about your ex-boyfriend, if you're rude to the waiter, you know, if you're just not charming, it's going to back, backfire. You're not going to get dates. So we find that the aggressiveness that women use at work is beneficial, of course, but you can't be that way on dates. You can't say, so am I going to hear from you again? Or what are we, what are we doing for date two? Is there going to be a date two? You know, like women are very aggressive, but you can't be that way in dating without men getting turned off. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So my husband, um, he mentioned several times that he had met women who had lovely pictures, but he decided not to pursue a relationship with them because they didn't seem feminine to him. Right. That's exactly it. I mean, as much as women have progressed with technology and their jobs and income and, you know, women can run marathons, they can run corporations. There's nothing stopping. And Ellen and I, there's no man involved in our business and our company. However, when it comes to dating and marriage, we have to be feminine. We have to bring out our feminine side. We can't be these masculine bulldozers. Um, men are turned off by it. And that's why we keep saying it's biological. The rules are biological. Men and women are different. Men are masculine. Women are feminine. We're born this way. And we can't deny it and say, 
oh, you know, I could just act any, any way I want. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Severely short hair, being too aggressive, you know, all this masculinity. It's sort of like Samantha on Sex in the City. It's just a big turnoff. Yeah. And so how can women like remember to do that? Like when it, it's kind of hard to switch those roles to be a bulldog at work and then, right. and then turn it off because this is obviously women who want to get married, want to have children, want to share their lives with someone. It's a very important goal. And we want to feel like we can do something to help ourselves achieve this goal but obviously it's not be a bulldog and hunt men down right well that's why we wrote the rules and that's why we wrote the rules for marriage <clears throat> when we wrote the rules for marriage we interviewed a lot of women who were married a long time one of them was eileen ford the head of the ford modeling agency and she said to me on the phone that she's a bulldog at work and when she comes home to jerry she is a pussycat Mm. And it's true. Like I, you know, I work hard and uh, when my husband comes home, it's like, what do you want for dinner? You know, and talk about his day. And we talk about my day too, but it's like my feminine energy is turned on. It's like a faucet. You just have to turn off the masculine, turn on the feminine, because that's what makes for a good relationship. And I see, you know, when I look at celebrity couples, the ones where the women are masculine, I can see it just creates a distance from the men, whereas like Catherine Zeta Jones again, she's very, you know, aggressive with her career and won an Oscar, you know, like she's a go-getter. But I could see she's very like Michael. I remember when she got pregnant, they had been trying for like a little while. She goes, Oh, Michael. You know, I could see this little charming girlish voice. Like mm. her mother taught her well. So if your mother didn't teach you this, that's why we wrote the rules. Because when we do yeah. consultations, we ask women what did your parents teach you about dating? And I'm shocked, but there's usually like nothing. They said, go to college, get a good education, get a job, pay your rent. They don't teach them anything about dating. In fact, they say that they don't even know. They think whatever, you know, call men, don't, you know, like they think it's what anything goes. So yeah. there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of bad dating advice out there. That's why we wrote the rules handbook because there are dating coaches telling women, call men. Tell them how you feel, you know, buy them a drink. You know, if you see a guy at a bar, like walk over to him, like, you know, it's 2024, anything goes. And it's such bad dating advice because it encourages relationships that are going to end and end badly. Oh yeah. So much, so much bad advice out there. Well, I'm so glad that I got to read the rules and finally started listening to them. I'm, I'm definitely going to check out the rules handbook where can women find out more about you and your work? Obviously, checking out your books is a great first step. What what else can women do? We have a website, therulesbook.com. We offer consultations, private phone, email, and also courses. We have a course for becoming a dating coach. Many women get engaged or married, and they're so thrilled, like you, that they found the rules that they want to spread the good news to other women. So they take this course. It's a 12 week online course. We train them to do consultations the way we do them. And when they get certified, they their information gets posted on our website so that they can become dating coaches on a smaller scale. We also have a charm school course. Like I said, many women are very aggressive and like bulldogs and we teach them how to be more feminine. We have a confidence course. You'd be surprised how many women had dysfunctional childhoods, uh, either absentee parents, alcoholic parents, you know, they grew up in dysfunction. They did not have any role models for healthy relationships. So we teach them how to overcome that and be confident when they're dating. And we have a reinventing yourself course. You know, obviously women struggle with weight and looks and all that aging, you know, feeling, especially you were talking to the over 40 market, a lot of women over 40 feel like, oh, I'm competing with girls on Instagram who are 25. And we help them learn that you you can't worry about what else is out there. Just be the best you can be. So that's our reinvention course. And we have Instagram, the rules book, and Facebook, the rules book, where we illustrate 
every day how the rules play out. We um, show examples from TV shows, from movies, from just everyday situations. For example, this woman on TikTok said that she met a guy at a bar and he paid for her to travel to him. She spent 10, 10 days with him. And it's like, even if a guy pays for you to travel to him or he sends a limousine, you, your answer is no, because yeah. we're, not, we're not traveling to you. We're not doing the work. We're not being inconvenienced. If you want to see me, you have to come to me. So all these mistakes women are making, uh, we try to rectify and teach them the right way, the rules way, because we want results. The rules is about results. And at 40 plus, you really don't have any time to waste. Right. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with me and answering these questions. I know that our listeners are just going to love having this information. And I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Renee. I really enjoyed it. Absolutely. Take care. You too. Thanks. Bye.